Hi guys! My name is Dr. Rocker and in this video I will show you how to ink your drawings properly. You need to have a decent sketch, because the most important thing for a good drawing is a correct sketch. All the best inking will not be enough if the draft is not good. But that put aside, let's start with the video. First, lines. Towards the light source the lines grow thinner. You can even leave a line open where the light hits the shape directly. In my case, the light comes from this direction. So this line is quite thick here and shrinks when heading towards the light. When using a micron pen, you can variate the thickness of the line by pressure or by using the edge of the pen. If you are feeling confident, you can also use a brush or a brush pen. There are several good brands out there, but in my case I'm sticking to Micron pens, because they are waterproof and that's important when you want to color your drawing with Copic markers afterwards, because the lines will not smudge when using waterproof pens like Microns. Here you can see me demonstrating how some of the other pens are not the best choice when using alcohol based markers like Copics. Look at the smudge on those three compared to the micron pen I used at the bottom. Also a very important thing is to move your paper. Especially when you are using brushes or quills. But also with fine liners it's very important to use your advantages. Because there is always a movement you feel most confident about. Usually horizontally, because you only have to move your wrist like that. A variation in line width is creating a drawing that looks more alive. It's okay to bend the rules. Sometimes it's best to draw lines from thick to thin, even if they are not heading towards the light. Invigorate your drawing. The outlines of the subject, in my case Mr. Logan here, should be thicker than the rest, so he stands out. Especially when you should use background. But still make your lines very dynamic, going from thick to thin. Second, shadows. You have to know that every muscle is a three-dimensional shape. And when the light hits a shape, it throws a shadow. So when the light source is here, the shadow from this muscle is to be seen right here. So now it's time to fill in all these black shadow areas defined by these shapes. As you can see a brush pen is perfect to fill in very big areas. And also while doing these, be careful not to work too straight with your shades. Again, it's good to keep the drawing alive with a bit of a sketchy style. And even small objects like these veins throw a shadow. So don't miss out on these neat little details. Third, hatching and cross hatching. Here you also go from thick to thin with your lines. Take your time, they don't need to be done as fast as you would think. Concentrate on the right space between the single lines. And towards the light, the space between those lines grows bigger. If the shape you are shading is round, like these muscles here, make curved lines. This way your drawing will have a more three-dimensional look. To create an even darker shadow, you can do cross hatching. Just make the same lines in the opposite direction. Don't make only continuous lines. For a more lively effect, interject some lines from time to time, especially the ones nearest to the light source. Third, 
Fourth, details. Draw some extra lines with a very small fine liner, parallel to some of the other lines. Then add some dots and little circles and half circles like this, that creates a lively effect. Some scratches like this are also serving this purpose. If you draw metal, you can do some waved lines like this. This way you are imitating reflections on a smooth surface. Fifth, materials. As I mentioned before, micron pens are waterproof, so they are perfect if you want to color your drawing with Copic markers or watercolors. And remember my little presentation from before, where I showed you to be careful with Sharpies and other big area pens, because they could be smudging when coloring the drawing. But you can use a brush tip pen from Micron, because they are also waterproof and you are able to fill in big areas quite fast. The traditional way of inking would be with a quill or a brush, which is also quite fun to do. But still, my advice is to use mostly pens and fine liners, which is the easiest way. But the most important thing when using a quill or a brush is to really move your sheet of paper a lot to be able to make those dynamic lines. And you have to be extra careful not to smudge the drawing. Okay, that's about it for me. I hope you have been able to learn something. For more stuff like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel, so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thank you for watching and goodbye!